ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. sure, but I think I winged one of them. Where's the sheriff? We gotta get a posse after him right away. They're gonna be mighty hard to catch. Them's the Bolton boys. And they're as tough and as mean as they come. Any sign of a posse? Not yet. But don't worry, they'll send one after us, all right? We better get going, then. How's that shoulder? Not too bad. Think you can make it to the border? I'm gonna have to, ain't I? Not too bad, huh? Looks to me like you're about done in. I can make it. Come on. Don't be a fool, Glenn. It's 70 miles to the border. You'll never get there with that lead in your shoulder. We gotta get you to a doctor. There's only one doctor in the county. Clinton, he's back in Sweetgrass. Yeah, I know. That's just where we're going. What, back to Sweetgrass? That's right. There's a stream that crosses the road up here about a mile. Now, we'll ride upstream a ways, then come out on this side and double back. Won't the sheriff figure that's what we've done? He might. But I'm going to ride downstream first and leave something that'll make him think that we went that way. It's kind of risky, Clinton. No use taking chances on my account. You're my kid brother, ain't you? Come on. You were out checking the North Valley. I may get back a little while ago, Kimisabe. Not see any sign of men we're after. Why all the wood chopping? Oh, me need exercise, Kimisabe. Last few days we do much riding, but no fighting. Not much walking. Me don't want muscles get stiff. Man in poor physical condition not have much chance to defend himself. Your point's well taken. I think we'd better get on the move. Oh, then you find trail in hills to west? That's just it, Tano. I didn't find a thing. The Bolton brothers seem to have eluded us completely. We not see any sign of them for many days now. Maybe they're not even in this territory. Maybe not. But I think we'd better check every inch of it just to make sure. We search whole area already, except country to the south. Not likely them go there. Too few banks to rob. Only one small town in whole area. Yes, I know. The town of Sweetgrass. It's just possible we might learn something about them there. Ah, me see. If Bolton brothers know them being trailed, them like they head for a spot them least expected to go. Right, Tonto. They've been very clever in throwing the law off their heels. They've done it many times in the past. We ride fast and maybe find trace of them before they cause more trouble. They'll always cause trouble until they're behind bars. Let's go. You say you found this near the stream? Yeah, downstream about a mile, in some rocks near the bank. How come there weren't no tracks? Well, there's shale rock right down to the bank of the stream. They wouldn't have left no tracks if they come out there. That's just what they've done sure as shooting, Sheriff. They figure we wouldn't trail them across the rocks. Well, of course, we ain't sure this neckerchief belongs to the Boltons. But it's got blood on it, and I know I wounded one of them. Must be there, Sheriff. Why, they're probably headed south right now, straight for the border. If you ask me, I think we ought to cut across country and head them off. We'd lose too much time trying to pick up the trail again. 
Yeah, I reckon you're right. We'll head for Devil's Pass. Come on. Hey, hold it. Looks like a masked man and an Indian. Well, if one of them's masked, we'd better not take any chances. Let's duck in here. We'll surprise them. Don't make a move. Either of you. All right, Jim, get their guns. There's no necessity for that, Sheriff. We've broken no laws. Then why are you wearing a mask? Maybe they're planning to break some laws. I wear this mask to keep my identity a secret, and for no other reason. It seems to me if you were a law-abiding, you wouldn't care who recognized you. Now, wait a minute, Jim. Reckon we can't arrest a man just for wearing a mask. Besides, this fellow don't talk like no outlaw. I give you my word, Sheriff. I'm not one. Okay, mister. I'll believe you. But don't disappoint me. It's not healthy for a man to go around these parts wearing a mask nowadays, mister. Somebody might take you for one of the Bolton brothers. The Bolton brothers? Are they in this area? Held up the bank at Sweetgrass this morning and got away with 25,000. Killed a cashier and wounded another man. These outlaws are sure bad medicine. They're a ruthless pair. I've been on their trail for some time. Well, here's your chance. We're out after them now. You trailed them this far? Yeah, they tried to throw us off the track by riding downstream. Well, we found this handkerchief on the bank where they came out of the water on some shale rock. The handkerchief's got blood on it. Jim here thinks he winged one of them. Now, we figure they're headed for the border. Gonna try and cut them off before they make it. You say you found that handkerchief and there were no tracks? That's right. The shale leads right down to the bank of the stream. It was lucky for us we found the handkerchief. You and your Indian friend want to ride along with us? No, thanks, Sheriff. You have plenty of men to take care of the Boltons. Tonto and I want to look this area over more closely. <clears throat> Suit yourself. Come on, boys. We better get out of here. Good luck. Why are we not ride with Sheriff Kimisabe? Catch Bolton brothers. I'm not sure the Sheriff is on the right track. The Bolton brothers might not be headed for the border after all. But Sheriff find handkerchief with blood on. That's what makes me suspicious. If one of them is wounded, it doesn't seem likely they'd ride 70 miles to the border. You think them leave handkerchief on purpose to throw Sheriff off trail? It's possible. Where do you think them head for? That's hard to say. But if my guess is right, they've doubled back on their trail. And we'll find tracks on the north side of the stream. We search? Yes. You go downstream, I'll go up. If you find anything, fire one shot. I'll do the same. Are you back? Lucy, sometimes you can ask the darndest questions. Of course I'm back. How's the bank teller? Not so good. It's touch and go. Oh, dear. It's just terrible to think those outlaws might get away with this. You haven't heard the worst. Unless the sheriff catches them and gets that money back, why, the bank won't loan what's needed to put up that new hospital. Oh, Clay, after you waited all this time. Well, that's a lot of money for the bank to lose. Oh, dear, sometimes I wonder if we did the right thing coming out west. Now, nah, Lucy. I don't care. Things are hard enough as it is without putting up with all those murders and robberies and killings. The west needs doctors, Lucy. It's an important job. And someday the law will catch up with all these outlaws. Just the same. I hope they catch up with them in time to do us some good. What are you doing with that window? I'm going to lock it. I don't feel safe with those outlaws at large. Ah, nonsense. Those men must be 50 miles from here by now. Just the same, I'm not taking any chances. Oh! Oh, sorry, ma'am. Didn't mean to scare you. You Doc Andrews? That's right, but I didn't hear you ring. We didn't. A brother here got tangled up with some wrestlers and came out on the short end. You think you can fix him up, Doc? I'll do my best. Come over here and sit down. First bank robbers and now rustlers. This place is getting worse and worse. When did this happen? Uh, a few hours ago. That bullet will have to come out right now. Well, let's get it over with and fast. I'll need some hot water, Lucy. Yes, Clay. What's this? Brandy. You're going to need it. Well, this is the kind of medicine I like.
right, Tonto. Fresh tracks of two horsemen. They left the stream about a hundred yards from here. They go north. Look, Kimasami, blood. Yes, lots of it. One of them must have been badly hurt. This may explain why they pull this trick. You think maybe them need doctor? That's right. The closest one around here is back in Sweetgrass. There's one way to find out if we're right. Come on. You fellows must be new around here. I don't think I've seen you before. Oh, we just pulled into town today. Just in time to get in trouble, huh? That's right. We've sure had more than our share of it around here. All of this morning, two fellows held up the local bank and walked out with $25,000. You don't say. Yeah, folks around here think it was the Bolton brothers that did the job. Oh. You ever hear of them? Uh, yeah, I've heard of them. Pretty tough pair, I guess. Yeah, they shot that cashier down in cold blood. Ain't that terrible? I'd sure like to see those fellows caught. The West would be better off if they were six feet underground. Let's cut out the gab and get going. Just about ready now. I hope I don't have to paint you a picture, Doc. So, you're the men that held up the bank. The Bolton brothers. That's right. And just in case you don't feel like cooperating, we're also the ones that shot down that cashier. Well, what on earth is... I'll take that, ma'am. Get over there. Let's go, Doc. Get on with this operation. Suppose I refuse. It wouldn't be very healthy for the missus. Don't do it, Clay. I'm not afraid of him. Maybe you ain't, ma'am. The doc here's got more sense. You know we mean business. Don't you, doc? Yes, I believe you. We'll do just what they say, Lucy. We have no choice. Will you clean those instruments for me? Hey, Clint, out the window. Get over there. Hold on me. A masked man and an engine. Ain't they the ones that have been trailing us for weeks? Yeah, they're the ones. Think they're coming here after us? Well, if they are, we'll be ready for them. There it is. No sign of horses. Maybe they're not come. Let's go up to the house. All right, Doc. Get out there and get rid of those guys. Remember. I'll be listening to everything you say. Dr. Andrews? Why, yes. Now don't let this mask alarm you. We're here as friends. Why, what is it you want? Now may we come in? It's after visiting hours. Unless it's urgent, I'd rather you'd come back later. I'm not here as a patient. I'm here on another errand. Well, what is it? It's about the Bolton brothers. You mean the two men that held up the bank this morning? Yes. One of them was wounded. I have reason to believe they're headed back this way. So? They may need a doctor. I came to warn you. Thank you for the warning. Have you seen them? Would I be standing here talking to you this calmly if I had? No, I don't suppose you would. Kimisami, look. There are blood spots on your porch, Doctor. That's not unnatural, is it? After all, this is a doctor's house. They appear to be fresh spots. I had a patient this morning with a cut finger. I see. You'll keep your eyes open for the Bolton brothers. Naturally. Well, we've done all we can. Goodbye, Doctor. Come on, Tonto. Well, they're gone. Yeah, you've done all right, Doc. Now, let's get this other business over with, fast. Are you ready, Lucy? Yes, sir. What do you think, Miss Emmy? 
The doctor seemed to be under a great strain. I'm not satisfied with his story about the fresh blood spots being on his porch. You think Bolton's in house? I'm almost sure of it. Why doctor not give you some sign? They may be holding a gun on him or some member of his family. Uh, we wait for them and catch them when they leave? They may shoot the doctor before they leave. They shoot him for sure if we try to force way in. Yes, I know. I must get inside that house. There's one way to do it. Hello, Doc. I'm Luigi Capone. I have a little farm outside of the town. Why sound convincing, Tano? Me think you fooled him, all right. All I want to do is to get inside that doctor's house or get him to leave. Either one will do. Just in case that knife should slip, Doc, don't forget I've still got a gun on Lucy. Now the forceps. Well, that's the worst of it. The bullet's out. Are we about through here, Doc? All but a bandage. And let it ring. Finish this up. The bandage is Lucy. Better let him answer it, Clint. Might be the masked man again. Well, maybe you're right. All right, get rid of him, Doc, whoever it is. Hello, Doc. The, the name is Luigi Campone. I got the little farm outside the town. Well, what is it, Mr. Campone? Uh, well, the wife. She and other feel good. You come quick. See, Doc? I'm sorry, Mr. Campone. I can't come now. But if you'll tell me how to reach your place, uh, I'll try and come later. Well, uh, that'll do no good. She not a look good. Come, Doc, well, please. That's impossible. I have an emergency case now. All right. Then uh, Luigi, you wait. Uh, maybe you better come back later, say, in about a half hour. Well, Doc, you are the boss. Luigi, come back later. <laughs> oh, mamma mia. The knee, the knee, she go bad. Oh, all the time, she go out of place. Here, maybe you better come right in here. All right, Doc. Take it easy. <laughs> Look like Luigi need the doctor. Oh. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble, Doc. Yeah, it's all right. Now, you sit right there and take it easy. You're going to be all right. If you'll excuse me now, I'll get back to that emergency case. Uh, sure thing, Doc. You will finish the job. Luigi will wait right here. I shouldn't be too long. Some fellow with a bad leg, I couldn't get rid of him. Never mind him now. Finish up with Glenn. That's about all I can do. How do you feel, kid? A little weak, but I can make it. You're doing fine, Doc. Just keep it up and Lucy will stay healthy. Well, what do you want me to do now? I want you to join that fellow out there. Well, he wants me to go see his wife. And that's exactly what you're going to do. After you've left, Glenn and I are leaving. Only we're taking Lucy with us. Well, we'll turn her loose as soon as we get clear of the town. That is, providing you don't put nobody on our trail. Stan? Yes, it's perfectly clear. You want me to watch at the window, Clint? No, you sit right there till we're ready to go. You gotta save your strength for the getaway. All right, Doc. Get out there and make it sound good. Remember, I'll be listening to everything you say right here at the door. Well, the operation's finished now. I can go with you. Well, uh, that's uh, fine. Uh, you are coming to quick now, see? How's the knee? Uh, she is a little stiff, but she get me there all right. Uh, here, uh, you take the half. Luigi, leave the wagon down the street. Not a sure what the house you live in, but uh, you not a mind a long ride? Oh, that's all right. All right, I'll come quick, Doc. Grazie. I guess they're out of the way now. Glenn, you stay here. I'll go get the horses and bring them around in front. Come on, Lucy. Hold it, Clint. 
Throw your gun in the corner. Don't move, Glenn, or your brother gets it. Clint, get over here. Put your free hand on the table. Doctor, get his gun. Shall I go for the sheriff? No, the sheriff's out with a posse. There should be a deputy in his office. Ask him to come over here and take charge of these outlaws. Clay, who is this man? A friend, Lucy, and a darn good one. Oh, perhaps you'll want this. Thank you, Doctor. We'll get back as fast as we can. A masked man. I might have figured that. You might have, but you didn't. Now, where's the money you stole from the bank? That's in a satchel in the office. All right, get in there. Kimisabi, you all right? Yes, Tano. I had a close call. Help me tie these two up and we'll turn them over to the sheriff. Well, Doctor, you won't have to worry about your hospital loan. I talked with the bank president. You'll get it now. Thanks to you. I only wish there was some way to show my appreciation. So do I. Hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have them Bolton boys in my jail right now. The West needs good doctors and good sheriffs. You can show your appreciation by sticking with your jobs. We sure will. You can depend on it, won't we, Lucy? Yes, Clay. But you know, there's one thing I don't understand about this. What happened to that man with the black beard? Oh, he was the man with the mask. You mean they were both hey, the same man? He's gone. Why, why, so he has. Did you find out who he is, Clay? I sure did, Lucy. He's the Lone Ranger. Be with a Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. found the treasure, Richie. Makes you think that. Because all of a sudden, you're backtracking on your trail. 
That must mean you're headed home to tell folks. I'll take that map. Get that paper. How's that for shooting? He won't get very far with the game league. Come on. He's lucky, Tonto. Just a flesh wound. But it will be painful for him to walk. How the two get away? We go after them? No. This boy's more important. I want to find out why he's been wounded. Let's take him over to his campfire and fix his wound. We heard the shot. We thought you needed help. Yeah, I sure did. Where'd those two Alhoots go? We fired a shot of our own. It frightened them away. I'm mighty grateful to you. I don't get it. Why the mask? I have my reasons. I hope you'll trust me in spite of it. I cannot be a fool not to after you just saved my life. Who were those two men? I'm not sure. They must be newcomers to this territory. Have you ever seen them before? Two or three times in the last couple of days. I don't know how long they've been following me, but they duck out of sight every time I look back. I thought I'd finally lost them this morning. You have idea what men after? Yeah, Indian. They must be after the same thing I was. When I found it first, they wanted to get the map I was drawing. Because they knew that was the only way they'd ever find it. Where is this map now? I burned it. That reminds me, I'd better draw another one so I can turn it over to the proper authorities in town. With this wounded leg, I may not be able to lead folks back to where it's hidden. Where what's hidden? Did you ever hear of the Barcelona treasure? Uh, me here. A million dollars in gold and jewels lost long time ago, and Spanish wagon train not survive winter. Yes, I've heard of the story. Wasn't the treasure buried somewhere in the mountains near here? That's right, mister. Each year, we stake out a different man from my town to go looking for it. It's kind of a town project. We've even got a committee in charge. We figured if any one of us could find it, we'd all use it to make our town a better place to live in. That's a fine ambition. I wonder why someone doesn't want you to carry it out. There have always been greedy ones who, who wanted it all for themselves. I reckon a couple of them were following me. Why do you need new map? You will not remember where a treasure hidden? Just taking no chances, Indian. I've been jotting down all the landmarks, so if Anything happened to me, others could follow the trail. You be careful who you tell and where you keep map. If men come after it once before, then maybe come after it again. Don't worry, Indian. I live with my grandmother in town, and there's a nice strong safe in her house. If you don't mind, we'll ride back to town with you. You may need help sooner than you think. Sure, glad to have you. Granny always likes to meet strangers. Though I reckon a mask one will be a new experience for her. <laughs> Just give me time to finish this map. A fine pair you are. You all that have the treasure in your grasp, you let it slip out. Look, boss, you ain't never had a masked man shoot a gun out of your hand before. I wouldn't have been stupid enough to let him catch me off guard. Any idea who this masked hombre was? No. All I know is that he shoots straighter than any man I've ever met. I didn't hang around long enough to ask any questions. You want us to head back to the ranch? Might not look right if we're seen around here. Why not? I'm a respectable doctor. Nothing wrong if a couple of cowhands want to come in and have their health checked. If only you was half as good a doctor as you are a crook. Lucky you're the only MD for miles around here. Well, I may not know much about medicine, but I know enough to fool these local hicks. What do you figure Richie's next move's gonna be? Well, you say he's wounded. If I was Richie, I'd make another map to turn over to the treasure committee so they could find it without him. Yeah, that's good sense. And if he's made another map, maybe we have a chance to get it before he ever delivers it. You've got to get it. Why do you think I've had you trailing that kid ever since he shot his mouth off in town last week? Well, give Richie a chance to get back to town. If he has made a new map, we can depend on Stella to let us know. So that's why you made her take that job looking after Richie's grandmother. <laughs> why else? When the kid blabbed he had a line on where the treasure might be hidden, I figured we'd better have somebody in his house who could find out for us. And you know, Stella, she could worm information out of a rock. <laughs> in a couple of hours, I want you boys to pay a call on her. Now, as soon as you're sure she and the old lady are alone in the house. There we are. Are you all comfy now? I'll go warm you some milk. Granny! Granny, I've got some wonderful news for you. Look, Granny, I found it at last. 
The Barcelona treasure. Isn't it wonderful? After all the years, folks been looking. But I almost didn't live to tell about it. If these two men hadn't happened along. Don't be frightened by the mask, Granny. He's no outlaw. He and the Indian just saved my life. Say, I've forgotten to introduce you. This is my grandmother, and this is Granny's nurse, Miss Watson. Nice to know you, Miss Watson. You too, Mrs. Ritchie. How does it feel to have a grandson who just found a million dollars? Oh, she can't answer you. She's quite old and just had a stroke a short while ago. Can't hardly move a muscle since. I'm sorry. I don't think she'd want you to feel sorry for her. Look at her eyes. I've never seen her look sorry for herself. Her eyes plenty bright. You think she'd hear us when we talk? I'm almost sure she does. She can't answer back, but... Well, it's just a feeling I have. Anyway, I always talk to her as if she could hear me. Cleve, what about the treasure? I'm so happy you found it. I knew I was getting close, Stella. Especially when I saw those Spanish symbols on the rocks near Ball Craig. The ones I told you about last week. But you must be exhausted, Cleve. And you can't go back to get the treasure with that bad leg. Can anyone else find it without you? They couldn't, if it weren't for this map. There's a cross maze of about a hundred trails in the area. Most of them look alike. That's why I want to lock this map up tight. I can't have it falling into the wrong hands. I don't blame you. You've been looking for it for a long time. Will you rustle up some food for my two friends here? I'm going out and round up some of the committee to bring back the treasure. If you don't mind, Cleve, Tano and I will take that food later. We'd like to look around and see if we can find any trace of those men who attacked you. It's just possible they followed you back here. Yeah, I'd almost forgotten about them. I don't want anyone taking any more pot shots at me. We'll meet you here in a little while. Goodbye. Come on, Tonto. Cleve, wait. What is it, Stella? Please don't take any chances. I didn't know you were so concerned about my health. I've been awfully happy working here, Cleve. And I've grown very fond of... Granny. Just Granny? What do you think? Well, I... I guess I better be going. Take good care of Granny. You comfortable? Now, who could that be? I want you to get some rest now, Mrs. Ritchie. I'll go see who's calling on us. Bert, Chad, you sure didn't waste any time getting here. We waited until we saw the others leave. All right, if we come in? Yeah, but hurry up about it. Where's Jeff? You know he don't do none of that dirty work. Oh, the great doctor doesn't want to soil his lily white hands, huh? Hey, where's your lady? She's in her room. I told her to go to sleep. I'd feel a lot safer if she weren't in the house. Oh, forget it. I told you before, it doesn't matter. She can't talk, she can't move. There's nothing she can do to hurt us. Yeah, I guess you're right. What about the kid? Did he come back with a map? He sure did. It's right behind that picture. Well, come on, open it up. Not so fast. If the safe's open and the map's gone, what am I supposed to tell the kid? Jeff's got that all figured out. The kid returns, finds you lying on the floor, bound and gagged. He unties you, you tell him some tough armor you never seen before, busted in and forced you to open it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he'd swallow that. Well, come on, open it up. Hey, you do know the combination, don't you? After working here for a month, there's nothing I don't know about this house. Then hurry up and open it, will you? I'm not so sure I'm going to, Bert. Why not? Why should I settle for a quarter of the treasure when I can get all of it? What do you mean? Cleve. I've got a meeting out of my hand. Another couple of weeks, I'll have him asking me to marry him. You know what he's planning to do with that gold, Stella? And share it with the whole town. He'll be lucky if you see a dollar of it. Ain't you kind of forgetting Jeff? He's a little sweet on you himself. No. I'm not forgetting Jeff. But he taught me one thing. Always play for big stakes. Right now, I hold all the aces. And that means my price has gone up. I want half of your shares. You drive kind of a hard bargain, don't you, Stella? It's my way or not at all. Well, I guess you win, Stella. And don't forget, any double cross, and I'll be writing the sheriff a mighty interesting letter about how you're wanted for murder in two other states. Here's the map. Now get going. Ain't you forgetting one thing, Stella? 
We're supposed to leave you lying on the floor, bound and gagged. Go on, get it over with. Sure, Stella. Anything you say. <gasps> the road to the Barcelona treasure. In a few days, it'll be all ours. And you know what that means. Sure, Jeff, you'll be king of the whole territory. And every man will jump to do what you tell him. You've done a good job, boys. You and Stella. I'll have to see her soon, let her know. There's something we haven't told you yet, Jeff. Meaning what? Uh, you won't be seeing Stella no more. She's, uh, she's dead. What happened? We couldn't help it, Jeff. She got greedy. Wouldn't open the safe unless we gave her a bigger share. Did you have to kill her? Yeah, she was threatening to talk, and we figured you didn't want her to do that. We know how you felt, Jeff. But you're better off. She was ready to throw you over for that, that Richie kid. Did she say that? Sure. Anybody see you kill her? Of course not. What kind of fools you take us for? Where was old lady Richie? She was in a bedroom. Nothing to worry about from her. How can you be sure? If you ask me, we should have taken care of her too. Now take it easy, Chad. What's done is done. There's no way she can ever tell on you. Doc, Doc Payton! He sounds like Cleve Richie. You boys get in there quick. Doc, come with me quick. Something's happened at home. Stella Watson's been murdered. Stella Watson? Why would anyone want to hurt her? Did you notify the sheriff? Yeah, I'm on my way over here. Please hurry. Have they taken her away yet? Ah, uh, body gone now. You try and not feel bad. Sheriff say him look for killers plenty fast. I sure hope he gets them. Doc. Good. Who'd want to kill a nice girl like Stella? I wish I knew, Cleve. And somebody wants your map plenty bad if them commit murder for it. Are you sure that's all they took out of the safe, Cleve? Just the map? That's all. I can't figure out how they opened it. I'm the only one that knows the combination. You sure Miss Watson not know it? What do you mean by that? You not get angry, Cleve. Me only think that if she do know, maybe bandits force her to tell. I don't think she know it. She had seen me open the safe a few times. What about your grandmother, Cleve? Do you think she heard or saw what happened? I'm sure she did. Why do you say that? By the look in her eyes, Doc. Should have seen them. They were full of fear and anger and sort of desperation, like, like, like she wanted to tell me something. What a shame. The one person in the world who might be able to help us and she can't say or write a word. Yeah. She could only talk. There may be a way she can talk. Are you crazy, mister? Mrs. Rich is totally paralyzed. She can't utter a sound. I once knew a man that was paralyzed just like your grandmother, Cleve. He too couldn't say or write a word. But after a while, his family figured out a way that he could answer any questions they ask him. He could communicate with those around him. But how? Yes, I'm, I'm fascinated to know how anybody who can't move or speak can still find a way to answer questions. I'll explain to you later, Doctor. Cleve, do you mind if I try and talk to your grandmother? Of course not, if it'll do any good. I wish you wouldn't do this. Mrs. Rich is a very old woman and not too strong. Perhaps I'd better go in with you. No, thank you, Doctor. Too many people might make it more difficult for her. You needn't worry. I won't stay long. Sure, let him try it, Doc. We've got to catch Stella's killer somehow. Mrs. Ritchie, Cleve thinks you may know something about Miss Watson's murder. I know you can't tell me what happened in words, but there may be another way for you to talk about it. I notice you're able to blink your eyes. That means you still do have a voice, a silent voice. I'm going to ask you some questions. You blink once if the answer is yes, twice if it's no. Do you understand me? Good. Now tell me, do you have any idea who killed Miss Watson? Was it one person? Was it two persons? Did you hear their names? You're doing fine, Mrs. Ritchie. Now we're going to find out who they are. I'm going to recite the alphabet. You blink once when I come to the first letter of either of their names. Do you understand? I can't seem to duplicate that map. We've got to get the other one back. I wish that masked friend of yours would hurry up. He's spending too much time in there. If him find out who killer is, time well spent. That's a mighty big if, Indian. 
Personally, I have much hope that a woman who can't make a sound is suddenly going to blab her head off. You're wrong, Doctor. What do you mean? Granny was able to give me a great deal of information. Are you on the level, mister? Do you know two men by the name of Bert and Chad? No, I can't say that I do. One was chunky and broad, the other quite tall. That sounds like the two men who jumped me this morning. What about these two men? One of them killed Miss Watson. But that's absurd. Are you, are you trying to say that Granny Ritchie told you the names of these men? That's right. I don't like to call you a liar, mister, but what you're claiming is impossible. She couldn't do that unless she wrote or spoke, and I, I know that she can't do either. You underestimate Granny, Doctor. There are other ways to communicate information. What else did she tell you? Not much, Cleve. They killed Miss Watson, took the map, then left. But how are them up and safe? Miss Watson did it. She was working with them. That's not true. Of course it isn't. I personally recommended Stella for this job, and I know that she's above reproach. I don't think Granny was lying to me, Doctor. How could she be lying when she can't even talk? It's too fantastic. In what conceivable way could she tell you the names of these two men? Not two. Three. You mean there was a third man with them? Not with them, Cleve. But apparently the mastermind behind the whole scheme. Granny heard them talking about him. Did she tell you his name? No, she was too exhausted by then. I didn't want to tire her out anymore. While she's regaining her strength, I thought we should go out and look for those other two men. Perhaps they can lead us to the third man. This, uh, this third man, did she tell you anything about him? Don't worry, Doctor, she will. I promise to come back later and continue our conversation. I see. Well, if I can be of any help, you know where to find me. Thanks, Doc. You've been swell. I can hardly believe it. Granny telling you all these things. Does that mean I'll be able to talk to her, too? Yes, Cleve. You will. I only wish she could have told you the name of that third man. She did. But we don't have enough evidence to make it stick. So we're going to let him give himself away. I don't get it. How could that old woman tell him anything? I wish I knew. Are you sure he isn't making the whole thing up? I might have thought so. If he hadn't come out of that room knowing both your names, only she could have told him that. Next thing she'll be telling him your name. Then we're really cooked. I don't intend to wait until she does. No? Well, what are you going to do? The only thing I can do. Bert, you and Chad get back over to the Ritchie house. Don't let them see you. Hang around a while until you're sure she's alone in her room, then get in there and take care of her somehow. What, and kill that poor old helpless woman? Would you rather she killed you first? That's what'll happen if you let her gab anymore. Now get going. There you are, Granny. Not too warm, I hope. I'm going over to the sheriff's office now and see if I can help. No gunplay, too noisy. I needed to see. Now raise your hands. One murder in a day is enough. Oh, my arm! It's broken! Drop gun. It's all over, Cleve. You can come in now. Your plan worked. You trapped him just like you thought you would. It's lucky we moved your grandmother into the living room or she'd be dead by now. You're another one, Kimasabi. Fine, Tano. We'll all be glad to get these two. Cleve, can you find some rope? Right away. Them have plenty to answer for. One robbery, one murder. You got no proof against us. I think you'll find that Granny Ritchie will make a very convincing witness in the courtroom. Especially when she testifies which one of you two killed Miss Watson. You can take his word for it. She'll be able to do it. That ain't right, Bert. I'm not going to take all the blame while Jeff's out there digging that treasure for himself. Shut up. What I've seen of Jeff Payton, he wouldn't lift a finger to help either one of you. Well, he's got to see. He's behind this whole thing. He's got that map over in his office right now. Where? I don't know. It's over there somewhere. That's all I wanted to hear you say. Tano, you and Cleve tie these two up and take them to the sheriff. Cleve, if you don't mind, I'd like to take your grandmother for a little visit. Turn around. Come in. Hello, doctor. I have one of your patients outside. Oh? Well, bring him in. Granny Ritchie. What's the matter, Doctor? Didn't you ever expect to see her again? But what do you mean? Your two stooges messed the job up badly. What's more, they've done a lot of talking. 
Enough to send you to jail for life. I'm afraid you don't have much of a case there, mister. Both those men have long criminal records. They're notorious liars. I'll deny everything they say. And I don't think a jury will take their word against mine. Possibly not. But I think a jury will take Granny Ritchie's word against yours. That's why I brought her here to see you. We're back to that nonsense again. She's going to talk. Not talk. Communicate. Oh, yes, like that fellow you were talking about. Tell me, how'd he do it? Quite simple. When questions were asked him, he blinked his eyes. Once for yes, and twice for no. Watch Granny's eyes, Doctor. Granny, did you see Bert and Chad kill Miss Watson? Did you hear them say the doctor was their ringleader? Are you afraid to testify against him in court? Well, I think that covers it. Everything except the map. Where do you have it hidden? You win. It's in my medicine cabinet, a secret compartment. No tricks, doctor. My gun's still on you. Put your hands up. No, Doctor. You're not going to pay for your crimes by swallowing poison. If anybody takes your life, it'll be the law. Well, Cleve, the town will get us treasure now. Yes, thanks to you two. You sure you can't stay and share it with us? We have other work to do, not need treasure. Good luck, Cleve. Bye, Granny. Oh, wait a minute. I just wanted to tell you that I'm mighty grateful for what you did for Granny. It's good to be able to talk to her again, know that she hears me. Oh, well, Granny, there they go. I sure wish they could stick around. What is it, Granny? Is there something you want to ask me? About the masked man? What is it you want to know? Who he is? My granny. He's the man who always helps folks when they need it most. He's the Lone Ranger. Be with the Lone Ranger and Tonto same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver. The Lone Ranger. Hayo Silver! Away! With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again.
There's a good spot, Tonto. Well, Tonto, this looks like a good place for our campsite. And it's near town. We'll stay here. We hope we get here in time to help stop more stagecoach holdups. Six holdups in the last few weeks. It's no wonder new settlers are afraid to come out here. We not blame them, Kimasabi. Men not want to open new business, so there's no safe way to ship freight out of town. Whoever's behind these holdups is very clever. The newspaper says the sheriff's been on his trail for months now. Also, the Texas Rangers. But they still have no line on him. Strange Texas Rangers not catch them. Don't underestimate the Texas Rangers, Tonto. They usually get their men. But this time, they may need a little help. You want me to ride into town and see what we can learn? Yes, that's a good idea. And you'd better pick up some supplies. While you're gone, I'll make camp. Me go now. Come back fast. Now, say it again. Come on, say it again. Be reasonable, Randy. I only said Never I mind. I heard you the first time. You said we can't find these outlaws because we don't want to. You said we're afraid of them. No one ever called a Texas Ranger a coward and got away with it. Say it again. No one outwits the law forever. Some clever crooks at the head of this outlaw gang. We haven't got them yet, but we will. You hear me, Grayson? You're not talking, huh? Well, let this be a lesson to you. Never a minute goes by when we're not on the job. And don't you forget it. Tyler. Tyler, what's all this about? Well, Captain, he was saying things against the Rangers. Since when does any ranger resort to violence to settle a dispute? You're here to protect these citizens, not to attack them. But he called me a coward, sir. All of us. That doesn't give you any right to strike him. He's entitled to his opinion, no matter how wrong it may be. You mean I've got a knuckle under to any little pipsqueak who calls me names? I mean you've got to control yourself under all conditions. A ranger who flies off the handle endangers the lives of all his comrades. Now apologize to this man, then confine yourself to quarters to await further orders. Apologize? I'll never do that, sir. Are you defying my orders? I'd rather be thrown out of the Rangers than obey an order like that. Very well, Tyler. You get your wish. A dishonorable discharge. You'll regret this, Captain Prescott. I'll give you good reason to. Boys, we may have a new recruit, and one we can make good use of. I'm going to see the boss. And then Captain of Texas Rangers fire him on spot. That's strange. You don't know how it started? No, me come out of store, watch fight, and Captain fire him. Did you hear his name? Him named Tyler. Tyler? Not young Randy Tyler. You know him, Kimasabi? Not personally, Tonto. But I remembered when he joined the Rangers. There's been a lot of talk about him. He's made a fine reputation. Him not Ranger anymore. I don't think Tyler would start a fight without good reason. He wouldn't deliberately invite disgrace. There must be more to it. Will you find out, Kimisabi? Yes. The Texas Rangers need men like him. I'd hate to see them lose him. That's right. You ride back to town, see what you can learn, and be careful. Me do. Randy, you did a fine job outside that cafe. You sure did. I can still feel that last wallop. Oh, I'm sorry, Grayson. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. I had to make it look real. You're sure nobody in town knows Grayson's a ranger, too? I'm sure of it. That's why I picked him. You think this will really smoke out the outlaws, sir? We can only hope so. A former Texas ranger who wants revenge should be useful to them. You understand what you're to do now? Yes, sir. Hang out in some obvious place where anybody who wants me can find me. Right. And Randy, be careful. These outlaws, whoever they are, wouldn't hesitate to kill you if they suspect a trick. Don't worry, sir. I can take care of myself. I'll try to get word to you of whatever happens. Good luck, Randy. Thanks. What's on your mind, Gat? A big brawl in town today? Uh-huh. It could be interesting, Roof. Really? Why should I be interested in a brawl? That's frequent news around here. I know that. But this one's different. He was a Texas Ranger that kicked off the force right in front of everybody. Something he'll never live down. But, Gad, I'm a busy man. You're wasting my time. But you don't get the point. This guy could be valuable to us. How? 
Well, I was thinking that he must hate the Rangers for what they did to him. And you figure that he wants revenge. That's right. Maybe he hates them enough to help us make the Fillmore stage and freight line the only line operating in San Antonio. Texas Ranger, huh? Uh-uh. But why not? Once a Ranger, always a Ranger. You can't trust him. Listen, Roof. We lost Rusty and Duke on that last job because the Rangers were hot on our trail. We need a guy like this, Tyler, for our own good. Go ahead and feel him out on the idea. But remember this. He's not to know that I'm the head man. Plenty of time to tell him that when we're sure we can trust him. You leave it to me. He'll be glad to get the job. Don't forget what I told you about Texas Rangers. Watch him. How do we know this isn't a frame-up to trap us? Keep your eye on him every minute. out of the Rangers. How'd you know about that? I saw it happen. You're looking for a job? Maybe. How'd you like to go to work for me? What's the deal? Short hours, good pay, lots of excitement. Keep talking. And a chance to get even with the Texas Rangers. Yeah? I think I could be interested. Let's get out of here. I know a safer place to talk. Well, Tonto, did you find out any more about Tyler? I'm not know why him fight, but one of the men who see fight talked to him. Where was that? In cafe. Him pushed me out of doorway and then talked to Tyler. What did he say? Uh, him make job for Tyler. What kind of a job? Not say. Him say plenty of excitement and chance to get even with Rangers. Then them leave cafe and ride off together. Get even with the Rangers, eh? I don't like the sound of that. Uh, me think it mean trouble too, Kimasabi. I've been reading this newspaper over very carefully. Some of the facts about these robberies have given me a few more clues that I overlooked. What facts do you mean? For one thing, all of these holdups have occurred within 20 miles of here. That means the outlaw gang may be getting their orders from someone in town. What we do? The Fillmore stage and freight line here in San Antonio is the only line that hasn't been attacked. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Uh, what else paper say? This paper says they're extending their line and increasing their rates because business is so good. And people think them safer to deal with, maybe. Yes, and they're gaining an almost complete monopoly of the freight line business. Once they do that, they can raise their prices sky high. People will have no choice but to pay. If you think them crooked, Kimasabi, how you get proof one way or other? If my suspicions are correct, I have a plan that will bring the outlaw gang into action. What kind of plan? I'm going to put on a disguise and go into town and talk to Mr. Fillmore about a very important shipment. Buenos dias, senor. Come in, come in. Gracias. What can I do for you, sir? I have come about a shipment. Oh, fine. Won't you have a seat, Mr. Uh... Don Mendoza. You, perhaps, are the manager of the freight line? That's right. I'm the manager and owner. I'm Rufus Fillmore. So, that is good. Uh, this shipment I have to make, it is most important that it arrive safely and on time. <laughs> you see, I have the commitment to meet. If it's safe and sure delivery you want, you've come to the right place. Bueno, I have heard your company is very reliable. Of course, there will be more than one shipment. Oh. How does it happen that we've never heard of you, Mr. Mendoza? Oh, I have not been long in San Antonio. Oh. Now uh, we discuss the price. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, what are you shipping? What I ship is not important. Perhaps I send many cases in a week, each uh, 50 pounds in weight. The first shipment tomorrow to Corpus Christi. Now, uh, what will you charge? Well, our rates depend on the weight and the size of the freight. If your packages are not too large, they'll cost you... A hundred dollars a piece. 
Perhaps if the other express company in town would not charge so much. They've been having a good deal of trouble lately with holdups. They don't employ as many guards as I do. Uh, that I know, senor. But I must take the chance. If their rates are not much cheaper, I come back. Adios. Get mugs. What's up, Ruth? Listen, there's a well-dressed Mexican just in here about shipping some cases to Corpus Christi. What's so different about that? It'll mean a lot of money to us if we can get his business regular. Only he seems to think that our prices are too high. Well, don't tell me he was foolish enough to go see your competitor. Yeah. He's over there now arranging things. They've got a stage leaving tomorrow afternoon. I got another job to do, Gat. I get you. What a sweet setup. You make a lot of money out of your own stage line and still more by selling what we steal from the others. There's only going to be one way to ship and to travel around here, and that's the Fillmore stage and freight line. Once we get a monopoly, we can make everybody pay through the nose. Or they can see their freight right on the street for lack of transportation. Haven't we stopped every stage that left here for the past six weeks? Yeah. We'll just add this one to our list. I'll see that you do. Oh, and uh, tell Phil and that fellow Tyler to be ready tomorrow afternoon. Uh, what about Tyler? How's he working out? Just fine, Ruth. I got him at the hideout. He's sure anxious to get even with them rangers. Can't wait till we pull a job so he can make fools out of them. Good. Maybe he will work out, but don't trust him too far. Not until he's had a chance to prove himself. Don't worry. We'll take no chances. What'd you find out, Kimisami? Plenty, Toto. I left Fillmore with the impression that I was going to ship those cases by a rival express company because of a cheaper rate. And what him say? I noticed he didn't try very hard to change my mind. You think maybe him have gang hold up express stage? That's what I'm hoping, Toto. If Fillmore is connected with the outlaw gang, I have a plan to trap him and expose the rest of the gang. Now, what's your plan? Tomorrow you ride to the edge of town, wait until the stage leaves. Then go to the sheriff's office. Tell him you saw a masked man follow the stage outside of town. Wait there 10 minutes. What's the matter, kid? Getting jumpy? No, oh, anybody get jumpy stuck in a chicken coop like this. Let's get going. Take it easy, Tyler. We gotta wait for Muggs to get here. If he doesn't come soon, we'll miss the stage. We haven't missed one yet. We don't plan on missing this one either. The uh, boss joining us on this job? No. Why not? Because he don't have to. He plans them and we work them. It's a lot safer that way. When am I going to get to meet him? Why is this guy such a big secret? He's no secret. He'll meet him soon enough. How soon? Maybe after we finish the job today. That is, if you do a real good job. Don't worry about me. Every successful holdup's another black mark against the Texas Rangers. And there's nothing I'd like better. Someone's coming. It's okay, it's mugs. Well, what's the word? Stage leaves in two hours. If we start now, we can get there in plenty of time. Good, let's get going. I got a score to settle. I tell you, we got to catch them owl hoots before everyone's out of business. Well, Indian, what do you want? Me come tell you about masked man who follows stage on South Trail. Masked man? Are you sure? Me sure. Me think stage get held up. You hear that, Mac? Yeah, I heard him. But I think this Indian's having hallucinations. He's just guessing. Me see him. Him wore a mask, follow stage. You know, Mac, he may be telling the truth. That mask only might be one of the gang we've been hunting. You come see? Sounds funny to me, though, that the Indian's the only one who saw it. Yeah, but he may be right. Me no lie. You come quick. Get plenty proof. All right, Indian, we'll go after him. But you'd better be right, or I'll personally take you back to the reservation. Come on. We'll let our guide here lead us.
We'll wait here, Muggs. You ride on ahead and meet Phil. Okay, I'll see you later. Come on. The stage will be along any minute. You sure you understand the plan? Sure. You and I watch the coach go by to make certain nobody's following it. And we join up with Muggs and Phil after they ambush it in case they need any help. Just make sure nothing goes wrong, Tyler. The boss will want a report on how well you do. I know, I know. Sounds like the stage coming now. Easy, Silver. Come on, boy. We'll wait a few minutes. You never can tell when there's a guard riding behind. Never leave anything to chance, eh, Gad? That's right. Any sign of danger, we make a fast getaway. How do you always manage to cover your trail? Riding the creeks, that's how. Riding the creeks. You gotta be smart. Think of everything. Let's go. Hey, wait a minute. Who's this? Hold everything until we get this guy straightened out. That's far enough, mister. Mast, huh? Get off that horse and keep him lifted high. It's the idea. You figuring on pulling the one-man job holding up that stage? Maybe. You now, we could have plugged you from behind them boulders, but... I was curious to know what you're up to. I thought for a minute he was one of the gang. You know better than that, Tyler. You've seen everybody but the boss. Now talk fast, mister. So your name is Tyler? The same man that was kicked out of the Texas Rangers? What about it? I happen to have a lot of respect for the Rangers, Tyler. I know how resourceful they can be when they want to. You know an awful lot for someone we never saw before. Right now we got no more time to waste on you. You're messing up our plans. We gotta get rid of him. What are you gonna do? Shoot him, what else? Oh, now, wait a minute, Gad. You can't just shoot a man down in cold blood. Why not? I... Maybe the boss was right about you after all. He said once a ranger, always a ranger. And well, now I'm gonna give you a chance to prove whose side you're on. Yeah? How? You put the bullet in him. Yeah. yeah, sure, why not? Well, what are you waiting for? Keep him covered while I go in a little closer. I want to do a nice, neat job of this. Well, that's better. Go on and plug him. Not him, Gad. You! You double-crossing rat. Come on, mister. I don't know who you are, but I got no choice but to trust you. We got to move fast. It was unexpected of you, Tyler. If you joined his gang, why did you shoot him? We'll talk while we ride. The others are waiting in the basin to hold up the coach. Let's tie up this hombre and leave him here. We can pick him up later. Right. Must be time for this stage to be coming through the draw. Must have passed Gat and Tyler by now. Otherwise, they'd have warned us if anything went wrong. Uh, I just hope Gat didn't make a mistake when he let that hombre join us. Gat knows what he's doing, don't worry. And if that guy Tyler ain't on a level, it'd be just too bad for him. Hey, there it is now. There it is. Okay, let's go. There they are. You better sneak up on them and take them by surprise. Right. Let's get the box and get out of here. Drop that box and reach. Now get over there next to your friend and relax. The sheriff will be along any minute now. Tyler, you keep them covered while I look inside the coach and make sure nobody's been hurt. No passengers. Stay right where you are, mister. And you, Tyler, drop that gun. What are you doing here, boss? I told you I didn't trust this ex-Texas Ranger. I had to make sure, so I came out ahead of you. All right, you with the mask. Drop those guns and get over there. No tricks. Mugs, take that mask off him. I want to see what that hombre looks like. <laughs> 
All right, boss. He'll be all right when he gets fixed up. I reckon we finished our job then. Just in time, too. There comes the sheriff. Don't make a move. We got you covered. Just a minute, Sheriff. If I were trying to defend myself, I could have shot you first. These are the men you want. Injun, ain't that the masked hombre you told me about? That's right. Him sent me to get you. These men hold up stage. The Indian's right, Sheriff. I can vouch for the masked man. And who are you? My name's Tyler. Tyler, ain't you the bird what got kicked out of the Texas Rangers? Just a minute, Sheriff. I want to show you something that'll explain the situation. Here. A badge, eh? To whom it may concern. Randy Tyler was expelled from the Texas Rangers according to a plan known only to me and my junior officer, Lieutenant Grayson. This was done in the line of duty in an attempt to find the gang operating in the vicinity of San Antonio. This letter is his authority to act as a Texas Ranger in good standing. Signed, H.M. Prescott, Captain. Well, I'll be dad burned. This is the whole gang, Sheriff, except for one man. You'll find him tied up back along the trail. There's the leader of the gang, owner and manager of the Fillmore stage and freight lines. Rufus Fillmore. Handcuff these outlaws, Mac. Then we'll go back and pick up the other one. They can all get together then for a long, long stretch. You don't feel quite so frisky, do you, Fillmore? You don't have to worry about committing yourself. You're already committed, probably for the rest of your life. Tyler, I sort of wondered about you back on the trail. But now I know how proud the Texas Rangers are of you. Thanks, mister. And I sure am grateful to you for your help. My thanks, too. Folks here will be mighty pleased we got this gang clamped behind them bars. Now maybe we can settle down to some peaceful living. I hope so, Sheriff. Good luck, Tyler. Well, Tyler, we'd better be on our way. Adios. Reckon you're going to be quite a hero when you report back to the Texas Rangers. I don't deserve to be. That masked man's the one who really cracked this case wide open. Sure strange to hear a Texas Ranger giving credit to a masked hombre. You talk like you know who he is. Well, there's only one man he could be. Only one man who tries to do so much for the West. He's the Lone Ranger. Be with a Lone Ranger in Tonto, same time next week for new dangers in another thrill-packed adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again.